All right, in this video, I have rims and tires, big brake kit, power steering box, a bunch of whole little odds and ends that I'm trying to get buttoned up, and then one giant problem I came across because I did not do math correctly. Stick around. All right, what's going on guys? So in this one, this is really what I'm gonna to try to accomplish. I've had three months of cut in and out of shooting on random projects on this thing and I'm trying to gap together everything I need to. But the first thing I remember I worked on before was a power steering box. So the power steering box didn't really fit very well. It was hit, excuse me, it was hitting on the headers on the driver's side header and it was causing a big issue with it not wanting to actually close. So what did I do? I went through and bought a different power steering box to be able to swap in here and drop it in. So, first project. Now what we're gonna work on is changing out that power steering box. The original power steering box that came with the car, uh, well, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the build. Uh, the long tube headers hit it, and uh, I honestly, I, I'm not gonna bash the header that much to try to get that much clearance uh, for the stock steering box. So I ended up going with an aftermarket one. I went with a Bor Borgeson? Borgeson? I read good reviews on it. I decided to jump on it. This is the kit I ordered. It was the full kit. Comes with the uh, replacement pump. Plus it also comes with the actual steering box itself, the coupler and the lines. Uh, so And the mounting hardware. So it should be literally plug and play off of what I need. Uh, this does help with having a quicker steering ratio over the stock one and I've heard it actually gets rid of a lot of the slop that you feel still inside of the stock power steering box. Uh, this thing did set me back close to a thousand dollars, a little over. Um, so I hope it fits. I really didn't try. We'll find out. Quick update, after trying to figure out how to get this thing apart, it took me a little while and I just shut the camera off because I was just running into dead ends. This is how much I had to take off with this setup to get the power steering out. I had to remove the long tube header, and then since I'm pulling it out the front, that's the best chance I have of getting this thing out. Then I gotta remove the power steering bracket, and the pump just to get the gearbox out. Yeah. All right, let's keep trying. Gearbox is on. Now, pump pulleys lines.
here they are. These are American Racing Torque Thrust 2s. Um, I ended up going with them because they're the closest look I could to that classic old school look I wanted. Uh, originally I was going to go with Kregers, but Kreger actually stopped making custom offset wheels uh, around six or seven years ago. So 2013, 2014 by my understanding or what I could read, uh, they ended up shipping out all their wheels to be casted overseas somewhere. Uh, rhymes a lot like probably Heine, maybe has a C somewhere in there. And in turn, they don't make custom offset anymore. So American Racing still does. Um, so I ended up going with their Torque Thrust 2 series. These are really cruelly mounted on. You can actually see I'm actually missing some lug nuts on here because uh, I still have to do all my brakes and everything else behind it. Um, I just wanted to get these on because I hated the look of those steelies. All right, then came my second issue. The fact that my brake booster wasn't actually mounted. I couldn't mount it because the linkage was too long between the power brake booster and the pedal itself. So I had to modify this by going through, measuring, and cutting one of these aside, despite it should have been plug and play. So this is what I did for that. So as we go underneath the dash, there is one piece here that's very, very challenging to work with and hopefully my suffering will pay off for you for a little bit here. So the throwing arm mechanism, that black push rod that I had showed earlier, or I guess linkage arm, needs to go to a certain point on the pedal. It's actually... Um, hard to explain. There's a point of the firewall where it will come through, however, there is a point where it actually has to hook onto a pin. That pin cannot be accessed unless you pull the brake pedal assembly out by what I've seen. And I'm not pulling this whole brake pedal assembly out just to keep trying to test fit and test size one of these rods. So instead, I cheated. And I'll show you what I did. So all I did was I drilled a hole right there with a step up drill. So that way, when this bolt's here, which is on the uh, passenger side of the brake pedal, gets pushed forward, it actually goes into that hole. Oof. All right. Light. Don't feel me now. Anyway, you can push the brake pedal forward. You can access the cotter pin that you need to remove from that side hole, and then you don't have to remove the whole brake pedal assembly every time you're trying to swap out to find the exact arm you need. It saved me a lot of headache.
filters and it's a piece of a line. And it was lit. And it was this one. I'm checking to see how much of that uh, weight is actually going to be hitting the caliper. Go here, and a good way that the way I'm going about it is they're all tagged, right? So you have one fourth, right? So you got you got a number, you got a you got a forward slash, then a four. So right here. We're at about a one and a slash, the forward slash. So now I'm gonna come back around. Why? Because I said so, no. So now I can measure it with this spacer, which is three millimeters, to see exactly how, and I'm not gonna be able to fit this through there, but got something better for you. I need a, a screw or a bolt. I'll grab this. I'm just gonna match the width. So I say that's that's about right. Right? Give or take a no, that's 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 pretty fair. So now I'm gonna come in here and see how far on the So if you look very closely, you can see that I'm right on that one and on that forward slash. So what that tells me is that with a three millimeter spacer, as such, we will clear the caliper. However, comma, pause for dramatic effect, we're going to go with five millimeters. Why? Because I'm pretty sure we're going to have to order it. And if we order, it's going to take two weeks. And if we got the wrong size, it's going to be another two weeks. Plus the two weeks that it's going to take to return it. And time is money. So, five millimeters it is. So, the big thing that I have left is... Um, when I initially put in the Dana, we were a little bit on a time crunch and I put it in. And I hit everything I needed to with uh, rust encapsulator and chassis black out to where the hubs were. And that's where I stopped. I knew that all this was getting replaced. I didn't want to paint and restore stuff that's going to get chucked in the bin anyway to get thrown out. So I'm going to try to go through, get the wheels off, see kind of damage control on what I need to still restore on these back hubs and go from there. underneath the car now as you can see and I will walk you through you can see when I painted it where I stopped it's literally a line that just is pretty clear here um, the studs that are in the front here actually come off they are press off if you need to mine are all in good shape I had this rebuilt beforehand I just didn't have it painted so I should have new screws and new uh, 
new bolts, I should say, throughout. Uh, all the seals should be good. I pulled the axle. I don't think I gotta replace the seal now. I hope I don't. We'll figure it out. But for the most part, I'm just gonna go through, tape off the very end here so it doesn't get dirt inside of it. And then when I go through, I'm just gonna wire wheel it, hit it with some chassis black, and get it set so that way uh, it matches the rest back over here. And I don't have to worry about this continuing to rust through as it gets wet and corrosion happens. So, let's try it. So, down here for another few hours, trying to make more progress, pulled the other axle, brought it over to the shop owner, and in turn, um, I need to have the, uh, the bearings pressed off that are located down here. It's pretty simple to press them off. I just don't have a press. Note to self, buy a press. So, what ends up happening is, bearings sit inside the housing, sit down, and this retaining nut, not even a nut, it's a press-on nut, comes over the top and it ends up going all the way down to the bottom. Uh, he had a pretty nifty tool just to pop it off. So I'd rather pay someone to do it than have to deal with the fact of me sitting there with a hammer and trying to punch it off. Anyway, so I'm gonna have to order the correct ones. Uh, the Willwood brake kit that I ordered, for some reason, did not come with it. Uh, it's no big deal. Gives me a little bit of time to clean up the actual axle ends, uh, hit them with a wire wheel, chassis black them, um, and also uh, I can order a wheel stud, which I guess mine is missing. So uh, it's not an issue, it just takes me a little while to do, but now the project goes back on hold until I can get that in. So. some movie magic, the bearings are pressed on magically. So uh, this is the setup that we ended up going with. In the instruction manuals, it tells us to get away from the traditional style bearing. It's exposed on the back end. Uh, for example, I'm on the back right side here, so the bearing ends up getting pressed on like so. This being to the inside, to the diff, and you have an exposed bearing along the back side. We ended up going with a green bearing as per the instructions. Green bearing, pretty much the only difference is it's a sealed bearing with an O-ring and a snap ring. And then all your crud and everything else cannot get to the back side of the bearing. So, we ended up switching over to that. Uh, I'm actually really surprised that these bearings don't have any sort of binding or building up on them already uh, because we sent it when I initially bought the rear end many episodes ago, I actually dropped it off to somebody to go through the rear end. I don't know what they did, because there is a ton of debris and dirt and crud inside the axle housings, that to the point where we pulled off the house, or pulled off the axles, the entire ends were coated in just sludge and like, uh, it almost looks like chunks of rust or debris. So. I'm now going to re-crack open the rear end, go into it and do what I can to clean it out before I slap all this back together so that way uh, I can actually clean out everything and not worry about all that binding up in those gears. But beforehand, I will show you what I did do with the rear end setup. So here's this, the basic setup, it goes through, it has a... Uh, drum style e-brake, which allows me to keep an e-brake uh, for the disc brakes. So other than that, not too hard as long as you can find someone to press it on for you or you have a press and you can do it yourself. I don't have a press, so I have to find somebody. But other than that, let's get to the rear end. So I don't know how well it works on the other side. I'll take a look here in a minute. Put the light's over here. So 
all the crud that's inside there. All I'm gonna do is I just cut this out of a pretty of a like a thin malleable plastic. And all I'm gonna do is just uh, put it in and I'm gonna squeegee and pull everything down the axle shaft towards me so I can actually clean it up on this end and not have to worry about it going into the spider gears into the rear end. It's kind of a pain to get going, but once I can, it seems to work pretty well. It's working pretty well. All right, so to reinstall the axle is not too hard. A couple things you're gonna need. You need your socket. It's gonna be a 5 16 9 16 9 16 socket, rubber mallet. I put a little Loctite on mine. And the original mounting hardware you're gonna use that's still in the axle. Uh, I went through and regrooved um, and just re-threaded some of these. Uh, you could tell that they had taken a little bit of beating over time. So it's not too hard. Uh, but after you go through and just make sure you have all those good. If you want, you can use a little bit of like a WD-40 or something. But uh, other than that, it's pretty simple to put it on. So, bracket mounts up how it needs to. Once it goes in, it literally just slides right in. And when it grooves onto the back, see if I can do it without messing this up here. Just pops on, so there's a little lip on the inside. At the inside of the axle housing, you have to kind of get it through. There's another bearing in there. So, other than that though, it'll situate pretty close, but the biggest thing you gotta do now is line up the holes on the back, and then I use a rubber mallet to tap it in just to get it started so I can start getting the thread. Now, there is a bracket on the inside, that U-shaped bracket. Once I got the threads that actually come through the housing, what I do is I, uh, once I have just enough thread, I'll actually with my fingers kind of push and maneuver that inner U-bracket in there so I can actually get it to latch onto the threads and then I'll come back through, spin the axle with the, with the ratchet, put on one bolt by a couple threads, finish getting it kind of pushed on a little bit more and use the threads to pull that axle all the way into the housing. So let's try it. Said <laughs> that you have a dog that this works with 15 inch ribs. 
It does not work with 15 inch rims. No, we don't have to redo studs, man. You can fucking <laughs> sell the rims. <laughs> <laughs> buy new ones, dog. Oh, god dang it. Do some 16s, man. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. Big wheel racing, baby. <laughs> Woo! Mopar. You want more power? You want more power? You need more parts, baby? <laughs> Mopar. So, I'm having an issue. <laughs> With it connecting the inside of the wheel, I can't even get it to the inner lip, which is even raised. It's hitting on the outer lip. I there's no way in hell I can run this. Allegedly. No, there's no way I can <laughs> run this. And the other two's brilliant idea is run a spacer, but because I'm running a two-inch drop spring in the rear. I'm probably gonna hit the fender well. So I can't do that. So I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Hey, we have an idea. What's that? Longer studs. Longer studs won't help me. I have another idea. Sell the 15s, get 16s. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> At least you're honest. Now what I can do. Ooh. Nope, I take that back. I can't do that. We can just JV weld <coughs> the wheels onto the stud. <laughs> Yo, three threads, it's a red lock type. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so that's going to wrap it up. Uh, let's see, it was the rear end rebuild. Uh, we're trying to clean it up. Brake install, tire issue. The power brake booster install, power steering box install, and uh, let's see the introduction of Andy and George. I think I've tried to knock out as much as I could. I'm sure there's a lot of little stuff I'm missing. I'm gonna keep trying to keep this moving as fast as I can for you guys. If there's something specific you guys wanna see, let me know and that way I can get everything in for you guys and go from there. But other than that, keep building.